In today's video, we're gonna be installing one of the easiest and most affordable methods that you can connect a generator to your house. Now, the best part of this install is you can use it for both gasoline power generators or solar generators as well. The most important part of the system is gonna be the generator inlet. Now, you can install this on the inside or the outside of your home. For inlets, there are two ratings, 30 amp and 50 amp. Usually, if your generator is 7,000 watts or less, you'll use a 30 amp, which is what I'm doing here. And now for the star of the show that makes this system work, it's called the Generator Interlock Kit. Now while it sounds fancy, it's literally just a piece of metal that prevents you accidentally turning two circuit breakers on at the same time. But here's where many people get into trouble. You do need a specific location for the interlock kit. It has to generally be next to your main circuit breaker so that the mechanical levers can work. Your directions for your specific interlock kit will tell you precisely which locations you need. This kit requires the two spots just below my main breaker to be open. But just like your panel at home, you're likely to already have circuit breakers in those positions. So we do need to make some changes to make sure this thing can fit. The first step of any electric project is to turn off the power. Now you might not be comfortable doing this, so you can use this video as a guide so that you understand the steps involved. Now one good surprise is you will generally find that there is enough slack on your circuit breaker wires to move them slightly. So with the power off, I'm simply going to move each one of the breakers down until I free up that location. If your wire doesn't have enough slack, you do have a couple of options. You can use wire nuts inside your panel to extend the wire further so you can move the breaker somewhere else. And here's our all-powerful 30 amp interlock breaker. Well, in fact, this is just a regular circuit breaker. It sells for $12. It's a dual pole, meaning it can accept 240 volts. This is how our electricity from our generator will be backfed into the panel. Now, I did say backfed because in this situation, you are doing a legal form of backfeeding because of the interlock system. Next, we've got our generator inlet box. This one is rated for 30 amps to 240 volts, so this will be perfect for most gas generators or battery-powered units. There are a million different models of these online right now that you can buy, but this Reliance one has been around forever, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. I also like the fact it's got knockouts on both sides, the bottom and the back. If your panel is exposed or if you've just got drywall, the steps will be a lot easier. I have a bit of a screwy situation here. This panel is recessed into the wall and that generally isn't an issue, but the walls are actually covered with plywood. Also, I'm going to cut this small section out below and this will give me an access panel for more work in the future. And you're going to need access and that's where you're going to use one of these knockouts. I can drill a hole through this wood beam and I'll be able to fish my cable up. I'm using the knockout on the back of the inlet to feed my wire. Additionally, I'm gonna use this cable clamp that threads inside, and this will hold the wire securely once it's mounted. You'll wanna be certain to use one of these on your electric panel as well, because if the wire just touched the edges of that hole, it could get cut or broken, and it could cause a short circuit. One good tip is to do some of the wiring beforehand. That way you can just feed it into the wall, but it's already secured into the clamp. For this installation, I'm happy to have the outlet right next to my panel, but if you want to extend this wire further, you can. They generally recommend going up to about 50 feet before you have to consider upgrading the size of the wire. Make sure that the wire that you pull into your electric panel can reach at least all the way to the top, because by the time you bend it around, you are going to use some of it up, and you don't want to run short. Now just secure this access panel back to the wall and mount the inlet box. It's worth making sure that it's level as well. It's super simple to install. You just use three wood screws to mount it to either your siding, your wall board, or whatever you've got. Now wiring these inlets is surprisingly easy. You've just got to deal with four wires. You've got two hots, which are indicated by the red and the black, the white, which is your neutral, and of course the copper ground. The copper ground wire is the only one that goes in differently. It simply attaches to the box because they've pre-wired that green wire into the inlet. Just unscrew the green screw and slide the copper wire right into the opposite end of the connector and tighten it down. The black and the red are considered identical electrically. They are both hot wires. Now when you look at the back of the inlet, there is one hole that's labeled W and that of course is for the white, but then you've got an X and a Y. Those are the standard designations on this model for both of the hot wires and it does not matter which one of them gets the red or the black. You'll just wanna make certain that you get the white into the W terminal. And here's the part you really don't want to get wrong. So many people mess this up. Insert it into the hole and then see how much insulation is showing. You do not want to have a lot of copper exposed beyond that hole. As we can see in this close up here, this is really the perfect amount. It's cut just below the entrance of the hole. You want to make sure you're getting a good connection, but you don't want extra wire that could short out on something else. Once you get each of these wires tightened down, you're going to think the job is done, but you'd be completely wrong. Once you start to move this thing around, the terminals will loosen up slightly, so just before you assemble the box completely on the wall, go ahead and recheck each one of those screws, and you're going to be shocked to see that there is a little bit of slack. I like to bend these wires a bit to make some curves, so that when I push that outlet against the wall, it goes together easily. Now
Now onto the interlock breaker itself, we need to first strip some of the insulation off of the wire that's going into our electric panel. You can go ahead and cut off the excess, and now we're left with the same four wires that we can connect into our panel. I'll begin by connecting my ground terminal, but I don't have any open ground spots to connect the wire to, but fortunately you are allowed to connect multiple ground terminals under one screw. You're not allowed to do that with neutrals, but here I'm able to slip two grounds together and tighten this terminal down. Next I need to connect my neutral wire. Now fortunately I've got an open spot here, so I can simply insert the wire and tighten it down securely. Now I've got to connect my red and my black wires to the interlock breaker, and again these wires are identical, it makes no difference as to what position you put them in the breaker. And don't be one of those electric slobs when you're inside this panel, the breaker connections are critically important. Strip the amount of wire that you need, insert them into the breaker, but you want to make sure they look like this when you're done. You never want to have any insulation underneath the screw of course, but you also don't want to have a lot of exposed wire. It's okay to have about a sixteenth of an inch sticking out of the edge of the terminal, but that's it. Any more than that you do risk getting a short circuit. Now we can install our interlock kit. Remember the interlock is completely mechanical. It just needs to be installed onto our electric panel cover. Now even though my panel's 35 years old, I could still get an interlock kit that will fit it perfectly. Most of them work the same. They will include a type of template. This kit might look a little bit complicated, but it's surprisingly easy. That upper bracket just allows me to position it perfectly. Now once I tighten that screw down, I've just got to mark these four mounting holes, but they all work generally the same. You're going to typically drill two or four holes into your electric panel cover, and then you'll insert some screws that they provide in the kit to secure everything down. The upper portion was just to make sure that I drilled everything perfectly, then it can be removed and discarded. And with everything reassembled, I can install it back on my electric panel, and I should be ready to go. And now it's time to test this thing out and make sure that everything's working. Now we're going to simulate a power failure. Power is out, you'll want to start by switching off your main breaker, but you can see that your generator breaker, your interlock one, cannot be turned on. So when we switch off the main, that panel can be slid up, and now we're able to physically turn on our interlock breaker. At this point, our panel is disconnected from utility power, and we can safely connect our generator. And because my inlet is on the inside of the building, of course, I've got to run a longer cord if I'm using a gas model, but in the future if I use a battery, I can plug that thing right in front of the panel. It's a good idea to let your generator warm up for a few minutes before turning that breaker on, but some models will say it's safe to do, other people will say it's a good idea to keep all your breakers in the off position, fire up your generator, and turn them on one by one so that you don't stress the thing out. For just over $100, I've now got a safe and legal way to connect my generator anytime I need to, and this thing is going to last the life of my house, so it's definitely worth the effort. And I hope this video was helpful. If you've got different ideas or better ideas, be sure to leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.